Okay. Uh, a very good evening to all dear brothers. Uh, uh, we thank the Lord for giving it another opportunity to discuss uh, his uh, holy words. Uh, so today, as uh, we already told you, we're going to study a prophecy uh, that is, uh, you see, actually mentioned in the book of uh, Revelation, fourth chapter. So can you read Revelation fourth chapter verses two and four, brother? And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Thank you, brother. So here uh, we see that uh, you see John was uh, shown a vision where uh, there were uh, 24 elders uh, sitting on the 24 seats that is uh, around the throne in the, uh, you see, uh, heaven. So who are these uh, 24 elders uh, today we are going to see? The general thought about these 24 elders is that uh, many believe that uh, uh, the 24 elders are the 12 ancient worthies that are written in the Old Testament and the 12 apostles of uh, Jesus. So totally it becomes uh, 24 elders. But in this one, we have a problem. If you see, these are called as C24 elders. And moreover, uh, what is the promise that uh, Jesus uh, has made to the church? Uh, and let it be any person who has to go to the heavenly salvation. Is that in Revelation 3.21, it says that he that overcometh to him only will I give in a chance to sit uh, uh, to my uh, next to my father's throne. So here it doesn't say that uh, they will be sitting on the other throne, you see, that is around the throne of the Father. It doesn't say that one. But it says to him that overcome, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, in the same throne. It is not the other throne that is next to the throne of God. It is on the same throne. So there is a difference and there is a point to be you see, thought upon because uh, the 12 apostles who were faithful were never sat around the throne. Okay, then what about the 12 ancient worthies? If you see, the Bible clearly says that uh, no man has ascended to heaven. John 3.13 And all the people are dead and are lying in the graves waiting for the Lord's second presence. Lord's second presence, only the dead in Christ shall rise first. So, if the dead in Christ are not at all risen, how can the people who are already dead go and sit next to the throne, uh, you see, of our Lord in heaven? So, therefore, these thoughts are, are not at all is a relevant and correctly applicable in the Bible. Okay. Then, who are these elders? How do we find out? We all know and we all have studied till now that uh, for the Bible, which is the dictionary? Bible itself. Very good. The Bible itself is a dictionary. So if you want to take anything, you see, we need to take everything from the Bible itself. You see, dear brethren, one minute. Okay, okay, brother, we are discussing no issue. So we saw the elder Prakash Pati one over what? Okay. Sorry. There was a clash in the ID. So the brothers are using the same ID. There was another meeting who was supposed to join. Okay. Anyway, sorry. Uh, therefore, uh, this uh, uh, elders can't be the Ancient worthies also because they are neither uh, resurrected. 
So without being resurrected, how can they go to heaven? Okay, and moreover, the heavenly salvation was never promised to them. Okay, now, then what is the answer for this one? Where do we find the answer? Dear, dear brethren, for the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. So, in the Bible, who are these 24 elders? The clue is given in the book of Revelation, chapter 5. Now, let us read Revelation, chapter 5, verses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1 to 5. You can just read only verse... Uh, Five brother. We all know this scene that uh, Heavenly Father is seated on the throne and is having a scroll in his hand and that uh, you see nobody was found worthy to open the scroll. Then John began to weep. Then a person came to encourage uh, John. Who is that person? If you see, he is one of the elders. Read uh, verse 5 brother. Verse 5. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah the root of David had prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. See, an elder came and encouraged John saying, Weep not, a lion of the tribe of Judah is found worthy to open the scroll. Now, this elder, if you observe, he never spoke his own words, but rather... He quoted a very important prophecy in the Old Testament. You see, there is a prophecy in the Old Testament where Jesus is called as a lion of the tribe of Judah. Do you remember, brother? Gopal, brother, do you remember where Jesus is called as a lion of the tribe of Judah? Yes, brother. Yes. Where is it? Genesis 49? Nine. Yes. 9 and 10. Read, brother, please. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up, he stopped down, he couched, he couched as a lion and as an old lion who shall rouse him up. The sip. Very good. Yeah. Thank you for that. So it says, lion, you see, uh, Judah is a lion. You see, therefore, this uh, prophecy was quoted by the elder. That means he never spoke his uh, own words, but he spoke the words that are already mentioned in Genesis 49 chapter. So what does it mean? This uh, verse gives us a clue as to who is that elder. So that elder is actually a prophecy, not prophets. You see, kindly note, not prophets, but a prophecy. Therefore, the 24 elders in Revelation signifies 24 prophecies, important prophecies in the Bible. Therefore, it is compared to elders. Why elders? Elders means generally it's a very senior person, a very important person. Therefore, these 24 prophecies in the Bible are very important prophecies. And moreover, if you read the Revelation 4 chapter, it says, these 24 elders sat around the throne, not on the throne where God was sitting. Around the throne, they were 24, you see, huh? seats, uh, thrones. Huh? So what does it mean? That means uh, these uh, 24 elders uh, must have something to do with uh, the matter of the throne. That means who is on the throne? If you see, it is God who is sitting on the throne. Okay, so throne in the Bible always represents kingship, kingdom. So God's throne means God's kingship and God's kingdom. Therefore, the 24 elders actually mean or actually represents the 24 important prophecies that are related to God's kingdom, that are related to his administration, that are related to his kingship. So, does the Bible say so? Yes. Acts 3.21, brother. Acts 3.21. What did all the prophets prophesy? Acts 3.21. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, 
which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since uh -huh. the world began. Yes, sir. So, what has God spoken through all the holy prophets? He has spoken about the times of restitution of all things. So, the times of restitution of all things. You see, dear brethren, the times of restoration. That will happen in God's kingdom. You see, about the thousand years, you see how God, you see, shall restore everything. So, it is speaking about his kingdom. So, all the prophets spoke about this God's kingdom. So, this 24 prophecies are related to God's, uh, you see, kingdom. And uh, moreover, if you keep on reading in the book of Revelation, there are many incidents. Whenever an elder speaks some things, you see, the elder actually, you see, uh, does uh, two things. First of all, that he, it is uh, covered with a white robe. He's wearing a white robe. So what does white always mean in the Bible? If you see, white uh, in the Bible signifies purity, the truthfulness, uh, or the clarity, or the purity of uh, the, the, you see, prophecies. So, and moreover, whenever the prophecy was fulfilled, the elder rose from the throne and uh, he knelt down before the throne and cast his crown before God and praised God. So what does it mean? This means whenever, you see, the prophecy is fulfilled, it brings glory, honor, and praises to God. And uh, the elder sitting on the throne means that the elder is waiting for the fulfillment of the prophecy. That means the prophecies are awaiting its fulfillment. Once the prophecies are fulfilled, of course, it will bring glory, honor, and praises to God. That's what it means. Therefore, now let us see which are the 24 prophecies in very, you see, very short way. Okay. Huh? Now, the first uh, prophecy, you see, that is given. Huh? The first uh, prophecy of the Bible, you see, is actually mentioned in uh, Jude uh, verse 14. Read with Jude verse 14. Jude verse 14. Mm. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh within thousands of its saints. See, the Enoch, the seventh from Adam, he prophesies about the Jesus' second coming. Uh, you see, he did not prophesy about uh, Jesus' first advent. Uh, imagine the seventh from Adam. He should have prophesied about Christ's first advent. Rather, he is prophesying about Christ's second advent. Uh, about the second uh, presence of our Lord. And what is the purpose of his coming? Uh, that he will come to judge the world. He will come with 10,000 of his saints. So this is the first prophecy related to God's kingdom. And second prophecy, we already seen this one in Genesis 49, chapter 9 and 10, where Jesus is compared to a lion. But in verse 10, it's very important matter. It says, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So the scepter, the ruling, shall not depart from Judah until Jesus comes. You see, until Shiloh come. That word Shiloh actually means, you see, peace. Now, who is the prince of peace? You see, who is the prince of peace? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So unto him shall it be given and the gathering of the people be. So, this is again speaking about our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is the second prophecy. And the third prophecy is mentioned in Deuteronomy 18, chapter 15, verse 4. Hmm. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. See, here Moses prophesied saying, a Lord thy God will raise a prophet uh, among thee, like unto me. So who is the prophet? If you see, you see, the many Muslim people think that uh, this is the prophet Muhammad. No, no, no. He's not speaking about the prophet Muhammad. You see, Moses told, he will be like unto me. It will be among the brethren. You see, among God's children, God shall raise a prophet. Now, who is the prophet? If you see, this is not speaking about uh, 
you see muhammad or he is not speaking about our lord jesus christ either because jesus christ again quoted this verse saying that god shall raise a prophet among thee that means he was quoting a further person to come now who is that one if you see it is actually speaking about the jesus christ head and the body you see the head does signifies our lord jesus our master and the body members are the church so god is raising a prophet who is having a head and a body a complete lakh and 44000 and one member you see among the people of this world so this is again speaking about the invisible government who going to rule with christ on this earth for a thousand years okay this is the third prophecy the fourth prophecy is mentioned in second samuel 713 second samuel 713 brother he shall build an house for my name and i will establish uh, the throne of his kingdom forever mm he shall build a house for my name this is again speaking of our lord jesus christ who will build the church for god's name and he shall establish god's kingdom on this earth forever and ever once the church along with christ are complete the first thing god is going to do is establish visible kingdom on this earth okay this is the fourth prophecy the fifth prophecy is mentioned in book of job 19 chapter 25 to 26 brother hmm. for i know what my redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the later day upon the earth and though after my skin worms destroy this body yet in my flesh shall i see god mm you see job said about the resurrection the later day you see what will happen ah uh, though god shall destroy his uh, body completely what will happen it seems uh, you see ah uh, yet again the resurrection god will give them a new body the same flesh he will understand god it seems this is speaking about the resurrection it is going to happen in the god's kingdom we all know that the main concept of the kingdom is that uh, the resurrection of the dead and uh, bringing back all the dead back to life to learn the truth so this is the fifth prophecy and the sixth prophecy is in the book of psalms chapter 30 verse 5 for his anger endureth but a moment in his favor is life weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning see weeping may endure for the night but joy cometh in the morning the 6000 year period of sin sickness in this world is compared to a night period but the joy cometh in the morning so the millennial morning when jesus is going to rise as a son of righteousness he is going to bring healing in his wings and cure all the you see uh, diseases in this world and he is going to bring uh, you see the joy in the his kingdom when all the dead are going to be raised back to life so this uh, 6000 years plus 1000 uh, year you see uh, reign of christ this is compared to the seventh creative day you see uh, hence uh, all the creative days if you see it is a period of 7000 7000 years so how do you prove it do you have a direct verse no bible doesn't speak any direct verse about the, the creative days or the period of 7000 years but there is a proof and there is a way to calculate how do we calculate if you see the brain if we calculate the last creative day the seventh creative day that period we come to know that the, the before six creative days period was also 7000 years each now how do we do that one if you see dear brethren we do that one by you see by considering the bible chronology we have studied a class about bible chronology we have studied from adam till christ uh, ad 1 it is a period of uh, 4128 years and from since uh, till the end of 6000 years 1820 uh, 2872 years so entire period we calculated from the bible chronology that clearly proves the 6000 years is a period of sin permitted in this world and the last 1000 years is a 1000 year reign of christ hence if you read in the bible in the creative day it says that evening and morning was the first day have you observed it kindly read brother see <clears throat> evening and morning uh, genesis first chapter brother 
Genesis 1, 5. Genesis 1, 5. And God called the night day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. What? Evening and morning was the first day. Now, why did not God call it as morning and evening as the first day? Usually, we begin the day from the morning, no? But here, observe the different thing God is using here. He's saying, evening and morning was the first day, not morning and uh, evening. Why? Because when our, you see, the evening comes, it will be dark, not a complete light, not clear, you see. And But when the morning comes, what will happen? Huh? It will be very clear, very bright. Similarly, each creative day when God began to create something, it was very vague, it was not so clear, it was not so bright, it was dark. But once it came to the complete creation, once at the end of creation, it was beautiful, it was light, it was enlightenment. Therefore, even the 6,000 years is compared to weeping. It is compared to night, evening. The joy cometh in the morning. You see, evening and morning was the uh, creative day. Therefore, this is the sixth prophecy about God's kingdom. Now, the seventh prophecy is from the book of Proverbs 8, 22, brother, and 30. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. See, this is about Jesus' creation. He was daily his father's delight, it seems. He was always before him, around the throne. Therefore, this is an important prophecy about our master, Jesus Christ, the king of the kingdom. You see, the verse says, Lord possessed him from the beginning. He is the beginning of the creation of God. Okay, now, the eighth prophecy is Isaiah 35th chapter 8 to 10. And, and an highway shall be there and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not shall not err therein. No uh, lion, uh, uh, uh. no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with the songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and uh, singing, sing shall flee away. Thank you, brother. So this is about the three ways. The third way, the highway that will be opened in God's kingdom. We have studied about this highway of holiness in the three ways class. So... The lion shall not be there. The lion, our adversary, shall not be there in God's kingdom. You see, but uh, it shall be a way of holiness. Uh, even a fool, those who don't uh, believe God now, even he also will believe God in Christ's uh, kingdom. Okay. The ninth prophecy is from the book of Jeremiah, 31st chapter, 29 and 30. Brother. Oh. Jeremiah 31, 29 and 30. In those days they shall say no more, the fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on ease. But every one shall die for his own iniquity, every man shall eat it, the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on ease. Uh, you see, what does the Bible say? You see, in those days, in God's kingdom, it shall no more be said, the fathers are eaten so grape, and children still have set on edge. Who is your father? You see, dear brethren, our father is father Adam. He was the one 
who ate the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. What happened? All his children's teeth were set on the edge. They all were condemned to sin and this resulted. But in Christ's kingdom, it should not be so. Whoever sins, they shall die for their own sins. Even their own children shall not die for the sins of their father. This is going to happen and all the dead are going to come back to life. They will be given an opportunity to walk in, up in the highway of holiness. Even after receiving the knowledge of truth, even after their eyes have been opened, if they commit any sin voluntarily, they shall go to second death. That is the individual responsibility. So this is the ninth prophecy. The tenth prophecy, you see, Ezekiel 21, 26 to 27. Thus said the Lord God, remove the di diadem and take off the crown. They shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low and abyss him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. And it shall be no more until he come whose right it is. And I will give it him. Oh, this is speaking about the wicked king of uh, Israel, King Zedekiah. We have studied this one in the Gentile times. You see, huh? Zedekiah was condemned and God tells that he shall take out the throne and the crown and the diadem from him. That the kingdom shall be taken from, you see, Israel and it shall be given to whom? He shall be given to him. To whose right it is? And whose right it is? It is the right of our master, our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall return as the king, assume the kingship. Therefore, this kingdom and kingship shall be given to Jesus Christ. Then only the peaceable kingdom shall be established first in Israel. Okay, this is the 10th prophecy. And 11th prophecy is very, very important. Daniel 12, 12, brother. Blessed is he that waited and come it to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. Uh -huh. You see, blessed is the man who waited and come it till thousand three thirty five days. What is it? Thousand three thirty five days. This is the very very important uh, year that actually comes uh, and signifies to the year our Lord returned to the earth's atmosphere to rule for a thousand years. We have studied this one in the Second coming class, you see, 1,335 days are calculated from 539 AD, you see, since the beginning and the establishment of the mass, the first time, Antichrist system, since then, it is a period of 1,335 days to Christ, uh, second coming. Okay, let us read next, brother, 12th prophecy. 12th prophecy, Osea 7 chapter, verses 8 to 11. Ephraim, he oh. had mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Ephraim also, also, also is like a silly dog without heart. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. Uh -huh. See, Ephraim is a mixed uh, among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. This is a silly dog without heart. They go to Egypt, they go to Assyria. This is a beautiful prophecy. You see, Ephraim is a mixed. Uh, Himself among the people means uh, God's children are told to come out of Babylon and be separate. Uh, but if you keep on mixing with them, what will happen? Uh, if you keep on mixing with the world, what will happen? The worldly spirit will come to us. That's what the people of Israel did. Uh, they left Egypt, but uh, Egypt never left them. So we leave, we should leave Egypt. Not only that one, Egypt should also leave us. Uh, so they are not... Uh, you see, completely dedicated to God. They are mixed people. They are mixing themselves with the water. Mixing themselves, uh, you see, with the world uh, and with God. Uh, what did Jesus say? No man can serve two masters. Either you will please the one, displease the other. And it says, Ephraim is a cake, not a chapati, a roti. You see? Can you eat a half-baked roti? Can you, can, if, if the roti is uh, cooked only one side, other side, if it is raw, can we eat it? No. No. Same way. They are 50-50. They are good in one way, bad in other way. You see, what did Jesus say? Either be cold or warm. 
if you are neither hot nor cold i will spew you out of my mouth so you should be hot or cold you can't be 50 50 uh, and he says silly dove silly dove means what foolish dove dove means what purity this is sinless condition many christians are very sinless very pure very holy but what is the use they are silly but they are foolish they are not wise virgins jesus is not seeking only virgins he is seeking wise virgins not foolish virgins who is the wise woman prop 31 chapter read it when you are free he speaks about the church the cater of the church there and they call to egypt is they go to egypt egypt is world world aha uh -huh. whenever there is a problem you should turn to the lord not to the world so this is the 12th prophecy and 13th prophecy joel 2 28 and 29 brother and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids uh, in those days will i pour out my spirit mm -hmm. you see it shall come to pass afterward that god shall pour out his spirit upon all flesh this is going to fulfill once the church is complete now the holy spirit is not poured upon all flesh now the holy spirit is poured upon as told in verse 29 only upon the servants and they shall understand god's things only the church is anointed with god's holy spirit do you think that everybody in this world has the holy spirit no so in christ kingdom god shall pour out his holy spirit upon all flesh this is the 13th prophecy the 14th prophecy is amos 9 chapter 13 to 14 Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the trader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall draw up sweet sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them aha uh -huh. you see what does he say the plowman shall overtake the reaper the reaper means the one the harvest you see plowman means plowing the field making it loose for the other sowing this signifies the plowing signifies the great time of trouble and uh, reaping always signifies uh, you see the harvest as the harvest is going on parallelly what takes place a great time of trouble is overtaking therefore we are seeing harvest is taking place the truth is going out out to all the world witnessing is happening but parallelly what is happening great time of trouble is running 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 it is almost seems like uh, it is overtaking us and it is this time that israel's captivity shall return return this is a very clear fulfillment of god's kingdom prophecy before our eyes 15th prophecy obadia 21 obadia verse 21 there is only one uh chapter there verse 21 and savior shall come up on mount zion to judge the mount of esau and the kingdom shall be the lords aha uh -huh. the kingdom shall be the lords uh, you see ha huh? the savior shall come up on mount zion who is this mount zion the church you see she come up on mount zion ha huh? and just the mountain of isau you see and what is there isn't the the kingdom shall be the lords this is going to happen in god's kingdom okay now the 16 prophecy Jonah four chapter verses ten and eleven. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the ground for the which thou hast not laboured, neither madest it grow, which which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should should not I spare uh, Nineveh, that great city wherein are more than six score thousands thousand? persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also much cattle you see 
This is again speaking about the God's mercy and love. Jonah went and spoke repentance to Nineveh. The entire city repented and turned to God. And he was very angry, went far and said, uh, so God may destroy it and you can see from his uh, eyes. The sun was so hot, he desired some shelter. Immediately, you see, huh? a small uh, bitter goat, uh, you see, yeah, huh? came. What happened, it seems, sir? Huh? Immediately, there was very shelter. And God sent a small worm. It ate the entire, you see, plant. And there was scorching heat. And he cursed, you see. And he was much worried about this uh, plant. And God says, you have never sown this plant. It came automatically. It came and withered automatically. You are not worried about this plant. Then should I not be worried about the people of Nineveh? Yes. This... Uh, is the condition of today's churches. Sir. You see, they are worried only about converting people, not worried about their salvation. They go to villages and preach. Why? Because they believe that they are going to go to hell. You see, they don't believe that God cares more than you. God has made a plan for them and they will come in the resurrection. They are so blinded. They can't discern between the left hand and the right hand. You see, they are so much cattle. God is also worried about the you see, inhuman creatures also, dear brethren. So in God's kingdom, all the animals, even including human beings, shall be blessed. The 17th prophecy, Mika 4, chapter, verses 1 to 3. Mika 4, chapter, verses 1 to 3. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it and many nations shall come and say come and let us go to the mountain of the lord and to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path for the law shall go forth of giant and the word of the lord from jerusalem and he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning's hook. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Uh -huh. What does it say? They shall beat their swords into plowshares. The spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation. They shall be no more war. They shall learn no more war at all. That means uh, no military, no warfare. All the investment that is going for uh, military will be invested in agriculture in the Christ kingdom. Just imagine the result. We are just leaving a 35% budget for the agriculture. Imagine if we start living for the 100% budget for the agriculture. What development, what beautiful things can be done. This is going to happen in Christ kingdom. 18 prophecy, Nahum 1 15. Behold, upon the mountains of the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, O Judah, keep thy solemn feast, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee, he is utterly cut off. Uh -huh. You see, the mountains, the feet of him that bringeth the tidings. Uh, a publisher peace, uh, you see, these are the feet of Jesus Christ. In Christ's kingdom, the feet members of Jesus Christ are publishing what? Uh, peace. Shortly, God's kingdom shall be established on this earth. Uh, you see, so this is speaking about the feetless members who are declaring peace to the whole world. And very shortly, peaceable kingdom shall be established on this earth. 18 prophecy. 19 prophecy is Abakuk 2, 14, brother. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters fill the sea. Mm -hmm. You see how God's knowledge shall be in thousand years. As the waters is covering the sea. There is not a place that there can be no water. You go deep beside the sea and take a stone or a rock. Below that one you will find water. You dig, 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 dig. Deep inside there is water. It's not a place there is no water in Christ kingdom. The entire earth 
Everybody shall know. Every tongue shall confess Jesus is the Lord. That is the truth. Dear brethren, this is in the kingdom. This is the 19th prophecy. 20th prophecy, Zephania, 3rd chapter, verses 8 and 9. Therefore, wait ye up on me, said the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the fray, <laughs> for my determination is to gather the nations and uh, I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then uh, will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Mm. Gosh, determinations gather all the nations. Therefore, we can see all the nations are uniting together. You see, united nations. Why? It is very easy to hit when everybody gathered together. That is God, God's intention. In the day of the Lord, in very coming days, all these kingdoms shall be smitten by God's anger. After this one, God shall turn a pure language, the language of love. Now the language of the world is selfishness. He shall change the tongue. Change to love. And all will begin to learn the truth. You see, 20th prophecy. Now, 21st is Haggai, 2nd chapter, 6 and 7. For thus said the Lord of the host, Yet once it is little while, and it will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord of hosts. Mm, you see, again God shall shake the heaven and the earth, it seems. Sir. You see, the heaven and the earth we have seen that how the first world, heaven and earth, was destroyed by a flood. Here in God's anger, this current system shall be totally destroyed. Then what will happen now? Then God shall fill the house with his glory, the glory of his kingdom. So this is the 21st prophecy. The 22nd prophecy, Zechariah 6 chapter, verses 12 and 13. Brother, huh? And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne and he shall be a priest upon his throne and the council of peace shall be between them both mm -hmm. you see his name shall be called the branch he shall flourish and he shall build the temple for the lord and who is this one it's jesus he's going to build his church you see and uh, the council of peace uh, shall be between them both. Uh, okay, this is the 22nd prophecy. Huh? Now, the 23rd prophecy is Malachi 3.17. Huh? And this shall be mine, said the Lord of the host. In that day when I wake up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man separate his own son that serveth him. Hmm. You see, they should be mine. God's children should be mine in the day of the Lord. How shall God uh, spare them? God spares his own son. And that is the time when God shall gather his jewels to him. You see, I will consider them as a very precious thing. So this is going to happen in the initial part of the thousand years where the church will be selected and glorified. The 23rd prophecy. And the last prophecy, you see, Last of all the prophets, John the Baptist, he prophesied about Jesus Christ. John 1.29 The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him, uh, and said, Behold, the Lord of God, uh, which taketh away the sin of the world. You see? He is the Lamb of God, that take it away the sins of the world. He is the main person for this kingdom. Therefore, dear brethren, these are the 24 prophecies. You see, in the Bible, these are the 24 elders who are waiting for the fulfillment. Once the prophecies are fulfilled, 
this brings glory to god okay the lord bless these words so we will share the notes please go through the youtube link and uh, any doubts any questions you have you can ask